वॉम हेलो टू ऑल व्यूअर्स यू आर वॉचिंग द प्रॉपर्टी शो आई एम चाणक्य भाटिया एवरी मंडे वी एक्सप्लोर नॉर्थ इंडिया बेस्ट परफॉर्मिंग प्रॉपर्टी डेस्टिनेशन एंड वी ब्रिंग यू आर एक्सपर्ट बैक रिकमेंडेशन ऑन वॉट प्रोजेक्ट टू इन्वेस्ट इन विद मी इन द स्टूडियो इज ध्रुव खन्ना असिस्टेंट वाइस प्रेजिडेंट एट प्रॉप इक्विटी टू एडवाइज यू एन यू कॉल इन विद योर क्वेरीज बट बिफोर दैट लेट्स हैव अ लुक एट वॉट्स इन स्टोर फॉर यू टूडे अटॉप स्टोरी टूडे Buyers confident hits a new low over 30,000 home buyers of JB Group wait in vain to get their dream homes. Stranded for more than 3 years, what legal recourse do they have? We will find out. As the Haryana government bets big on its recently announced transit oriented development policy, will it solve the millennium city's affordable housing needs? Why do builders and experts have a different take on the policy? We will look into upcoming regions of Noida for top projects in 80 lakhs. Projects in uh, Gur- new Gurgaon region that are worth your money. Affordable homes in emerging micro markets of Jaipur under 50 lakhs. And what all smart investment options you have in the new emerging areas of Mohali in 60 lakhs budget. One of the biggest culprits responsible for the erosion of buyer confidence in the national capital region is the JP Group. Ambition, overexpansion and diversion of funds collected from buyers has left the company with no money to complete over 40 projects running late by an average of 3 to 4 years. In almost all of these projects, 90% of the payment has been collected from the buyers and has disappeared. Here's a report on the stranded buyers and the crippling monetary loss they have left with. This was the dream and promise made by the JP Group in 2010 to lure the hapless buyers. Today JP Aman 1 and 2 lie abandoned and the group's words like trust ring hollow. It was a promise that uh, this apartment will be delivered uh, by uh, December 2014 that is within 30 months bro. But till date uh, they are uh, just giving uh, one by another commitment and they are not fulfilling any their commitment. Gorov and 10000s of buyers across JP Group projects have been given multiple deadlines of possession and none have been met some like Chandan Rajgadia who booked Crescent project in sector 129 Noida are left counting their huge losses I was just trying to you can say calculate my loss on the basis of this delay and uh, uh, if I simply make a very basic calculation uh, if I get by end of 2017 then there would be around 12 lakh of loss to me uh, from my pocket in terms of excess interest paid on this project and that's the thing which i you can say bother and there is a you can say continuous emi burden on me for a company which got land for free along with rights to build the yamuna expressway the question remains where is all the money collected for 41 projects which are running behind schedule with average delays at about 3 to 4 years this question was unanswered in a recent interview given by the group chairman manoj gaur to a national daily While he addressed the questions on group's efforts to repay the huge loans owed to the banks, not once were the hapless buyers mentioned. And when NDTV tried to get some answers, none came back from the company despite repeated requests. The company in the past had blamed NDTV ruling for delays in some of their projects, but even after the clarity on the issue, there are hardly any signs of construction in the projects. There have been several petitions filed in NCDRC against the JP Group, which are slated for hearing later this year. With no legal remedy in sight near time soon, the customers who are paying monthly rents and EMIs are left high and dry. The buyers are now pinning their hope on the formation of a real estate regulator in the state of Uttar Pradesh. Some have even given up their dream of a home. Chanakya Bhatia, NDTV. And we have in our studio Siddharth Yadav, advocate of Supreme Court, on, and also we are joined in by Vaibhav Gagar, partner Gagar and Associates. And from both these gentlemen, we will find out what options does buyers have if they are stuck in such grave situation. There are over thirty thousand buyers waiting for possession. There is there are no signs of them getting the flats any time soon. So my first question, seeing that uh, the condition of uh, JP, uh, for example, in such scenario. Siddharth Yadav, do you think that is there any hope for these buyers stuck in abandoned projects? First of all, I am an optimist, so there is certainly hope. These people have invested their hard-earned money in this. Now there are two or three things they should do, and they, if they have done or not done, they should certainly get going now. And I have been saying this repeatedly on your show. Legal recourse is one. They should for, for that the easy way out is form an association. Individual buyer to take on a large 
company like JP or any other builder, developer, creates a problem. The litigation sometimes stretches. One. Secondly, the there is a shortcut to the litigation route. If you were an individual buyer, you will have to start right at the bottom of the rung file at the district le court level or the consumer state le level. Whereas if you form an association, you can all collectively come to the National Commission. There are n number of judgments now which will protect you. But the larger issue, Chanakya, which I wanted to raise, and I've been saying it again and again, is a social issue. Now, these people have bought homes for themselves to live in. They are not getting anything back in return. And there is no likelihood also, your, like you, your report showed, there are years and years of delay. If we cumulatively calculate all of them, there are more than 40, 45 years of delay. How will these people ever, ever get their houses? So they have to do something. Not doing anything is not the answer. Mr. Gagga, now I would like to come to you. What legal action can the buyer take uh, to get their homes? Uh, well, quite clearly, as we, uh, you know, it was just mentioned, one is the NCDRC route or whether it's a district forum or the state forum. Uh, but according to me, this actually is uh, a blatant case of fraud. Uh, you know, if you're telling somebody that I'm going to be giving you a particular uh, service or a product or a house in X amount of time and I've raised money, you know, I've taken money from you for that. It's an inducement. It's a, and if the inducement is false and false to their knowledge, then this actually meets the ingredients of uh, you know 420 uh, quite clearly in a criminal conspiracy. So that's certainly uh, something that I would um, you know ask consumers to consider and take legal opinion on. Uh, secondly, um, you know you may also want to see all these agreements. They're going to have various arbitration clauses. Whether that works for them or not, RERA has kick, uh, you know should be kicking in once a designated authority is there. That's certainly something that has to be explored and uh, to its fullest uh, potential. But currently, the two immediate uh, routes forward uh, are the NCDRC with a simultaneous action for fraud uh, that need to be contemplated. You could also look at a situation of uh, filing a winding up petition. I mean, if you want to talk purely legally, if there are admitted debts which are there, uh, then a winding up petition could also be sustainable. At the end of the day, however, is it something that is going to benefit them and get them their house? Um, you know, if the company doesn't have the resources, then it's a tough battle ahead. And as uh, you know, Mr. Yadav just pointed out, you're looking at almost 40 to 45 years yes, of certainly. a backlog and, and if all the if projects we talk are about taken together. Uh, that, so uh, Mr. Mr. Yadav also said that is it better to form an association, register it, and then file a complaint in a group rather than going individually? You know, I... I, I somewhere uh, disagree with Mr. Yadav on that, even though that is uh, a practice which is normally followed. Uh, you know, I myself have advocated that for the longest time. But off late, I have more and more started believing that individually or, you know, smaller clusters are better placed to take up uh, these battles. Reason being that an association, you know, which has two, three, four hundred people or even going into a few thousand people, it becomes so unmanageable. Uh, you know, literally red tapism kicks in, there are politics of the association that kick in, that at the end of the day, instead of being able to focus on the matter at hand, one is grappling with a million other issues. So while I, you know, to the extent of saying that a pecuniary jurisdiction, uh, you know, obstacle can be overcome and you can hit the NCDRC directly, I think there is a lot that has to be seen into it. And you don't want, uh, you know, people who are inserted in associations at times to create issues Miscreants also become a part of it. It becomes uh, almost self-defeating at times. So that's why, purely legally speaking, while I may accept what uh, Mr. Yadav is saying, at a practical level, I'm not too sure I'm on the same page. Okay. Uh, and Mr. Yadav, there are numerous cases pending before NCDRC. What other options do they have? Is that one NCDRC they should go to or they have other options also? Uh, like Mr. Gagar suggested, there, there could be criminal action. But I, uh, criminal action is a very tedious process in this country. Complainant has to attend every hearing, whereas here a home buyer who's office going, working in a company, or a woman in that case, if she starts going to the criminal court pursuing issuance of summons to the directors, it becomes a tedious process. Second question uh, point which was raised was whether a district court can be. Now, in, that's, district court requires filing of a civil suit. Now, civil suit means putting court fees up front. Now, therefore, the consumer forum has been made only for individual persons like this, where they can avoid lengthy litigation, one. Second, you don't have to go through the entire gamut of leading evidence and so on and so forth. Third, there is no uh, appearance required. You don't have to be present on every date of hearing before the court. Your lawyer does the job. 
Now, just coming back to whether I, 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 why I propagate association is, here we are dealing with a large developer. Now, he has all the wherewithal, he will use all the wherewithal, any and every application. I have had personal experiences where they have taken it appealed right up to Supreme Court and then the matter comes back and it takes years and even for it to be decided before the NCDRC. Now, for an individual to afford that kind of litigation becomes very difficult. Over a period of time, they start losing faith in the judiciary. Mm -hmm. They have already lost money by investing in their property. They don't want to put good money after bad money. That's how the feeling comes in. So therefore, association collectively gathers some money. There, are, there is a president or a person who heads the association. I have, and I have had experiences where pe one or two po point contact become the source between the association and the lawyer. And then the, it's pursued, the remedy is pursued. It's, as till now, it's been found to be one of the most successful remedies available to the buyers. So, Mr. Gagar, do you think it is a successful remedy? Because in the uh, past, we have seen Unitech case in which the they were awarded higher compensation, yes. uh, buyers were awarded higher compensations, but it was uh, the stay was put on it uh, after the Supreme Court ruling. No, so, um, you know, as I said, theoretically, I, I have no issue with what Ms. Yadav is saying. Legally speaking, an association is competent to do it. Uh, yes, because it kind of divides the overall cost amongst a lot of people. Therefore, it, you know, the consumers also kind of benefit to that extent. But I, I do believe, and I've had personal experiences as well, where, you know, we've represented and successfully represented associations because there have been that one point man or two point men who have been able to do it, uh, deal with it. On the other hand, I have also faced, and especially in the last couple of years, a lot of these cases where the associations have become, they've become a mess. Uh, you know, there are too many uh, vested interests which has started creeping in, which has actually derailed the litigation process, according to me. And that, that's uh, talking from personal experience. And therefore, uh, you know, I'm not the greatest advocate of associations at every point of time, uh, even though in the past we used to be. Secondly, you know, regarding the Supreme Court giving a stay on the uh, matter, the legal process takes its own time. I mean, we all as lawyers, uh, Mr. Yadav, myself and others have had a sense of frustrations, but we also have seen what the courts have done, and they are, uh, you know, we have to credit them for bringing about a change in the real estate dynamics today. Because earlier the consumers had no, uh, you know, they had no say whatsoever. Today the builders are worried that the authorities are going to uh, come down on them hard. Yes, there's pendency of cases. Yes, things are slow and could have been faster. But I think the endeavor is in the right place, and uh, you know, I think everyone is at the end of the day going to see the light. Okay, before wrapping up this. Uh Discussion. Lastly, do you think an appellate tri tribunal after a regulator formed in each state would benefit lakhs of uh, buyers across India? No doubt. Mr. Uh, Mr. Gagar, I, I, I hope that was meant for me and, uh, you know, Mr. Yadav would have his own thought, but... So, Mr. Yadav, what I, do you think? I think it has to be done. Um, I do believe that there are constitutional issues which are uh, going to surface in time to come with the RERA as well with the framework because uh, you will need to have uh, you know people trained in law and with legal degrees who are going to be um, you know sitting on the APRI tribunal or uh, in the RERA but I think that mechanism has been well thought out um, I, I have no issue with that and uh, Mr. Yadav what do you think? No, no certainly I agree there uh, the the first step is in the right direction how far do we take it you see land is a state issue in this country so therefore, the constitutional, which Mr. Gagar correctly refers to, is how do you do states, whether they adopt the act or not. Now, whether a state, for political reason, may or may not adopt the act, then what does the consumer of that state do? Does he have no remedy? The answer certainly has to be no. So therefore, that's what I said. This is not only a legal issue. This is a very, very large social issue. Buying a house for yourself and your family and your children, and you don't get a home even after years and years of waiting and putting money after money. This has to be taken, dealt with a social issue. And certainly, I mean, more has to be done just then uh, taking these gentlemen to court or these companies to court, as we have seen that, that their courts have taken uh, several big, large directors to task personally when they have defrauded people. Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Siddharth Yadav and Webhav Gaggar for joining, our, for joining us and giving our buyers options on how they can take on developers who are playing with their emotions. And it is time for the developers like JP to wake up and do whatever they can to complete those projects and flats for which buyers are waiting since years. Moving further, we have a first caller and his name is Puneet Sharma. Yes, uh, Mr. Sharma, how can we help you? Hi, sir. I'm calling from Delhi. First of all, I think 
you for conducting such a very good show regarding real estate this show really helps the home buyers in answer various questions thank you so much for that so the my question is i wanted to buy a 3 bhk ready mm-hmm. to move in flat in noida for residential purpose okay and my budget is approximately 70 to 80 lakhs okay i wanted to know the future prospects of noida mm-hmm. in terms of infrastructure development overall facilities connectivity etc and i had also shortlisted one project of pratik group in sector 77 in pratik district area okay so kindly suggest me about the project okay sure mr sharma we will help you on that so dhruv what do you suggest his budget is around uh, 80 lakhs he's right. looking for noida and he's also thinking about the future prospects so what do you sure. think See, Noida has always been an end-user market, so it's a good market. It's given reasonable returns. The infrastructure is fairly good, and the connectivity is only improving in that area. Even the corporate sector is showing a lot of interest. A lot of new corporates moving into that area. Uh, looking at the Noida figures here, uh, inventory overhang in the upcoming region is 20 months. Weighted average price is 5350 rupees a square foot. and this market is growing at about 8% per annum now uh, the project puneet has shortlisted wisteria is by pratik group this gets a go ahead from us this is in sector 77 price is uh, 5900 rupees a square foot this project is already delivered it is located on the main internal road in sector 77 about 6 and a half kilometers from the noida city center metro station uh it's already got a lot of families about 1000 families living within the project at the moment it's built over 15.3 acres and has been is being managed by jll megraj there are two other projects in the same budget in the uh, in a similar location that we recommend he can look at the first one is mahagun modern by mahagun india this is in sector 78 price is between 5800 to 6000 rupees a square foot most towers in this project are already complete except one uh, this project is located on the main internal road of sector 78 around 5 and a half kilometers from the noida city center metro station uh, this uh, has an operational retail area called mahagun mart and a manthan school within the premises as well it's spread over 6 acres and it's got some uh, very good amenities like a large central park it's got a leander pays tennis academy and it's also got imported uh, marble flooring in all the bedrooms now the second project he can look at in addition is gor gandeo 2 by gorsons india this is in sector 119 price is around 5 and a half thousand rupees a square foot this is a ready to move in project uh, this project is located again on the main internal road in close proximity to the fng corridor it's about 7 kilometers from the noida city center metro station So Mr Sharma it is a go ahead for your shortlisted uh, project and also you can look into Mahagun Modern by Mahagun India and also you can look into Gor Grandeur 2 by Gorsons India Limited Next up is an email and uh, Jay Prakash Ghaswan writes in saying that I want to purchase two or three BHK apartment at Sikar Road or Kalwar Road Jaipur as it basically resides at uh, Sikar Rajasthan I visited the many apartments and shortlisted following project one is Apeksha Festival by at Sikar Road by Apeksha Group and other option he has chosen is Shivalika at Kalwar Road and the third one he has chosen is Viva Height and Gokul Residency at Kalwar Road by Gun- Guman Group and his budget is around 40 to 50 lakhs what do you suggest sure Uh, see out of the two micro markets that he's chosen uh, uh, kalwar road uh, looks like a better micro market to go with uh, s- primarily because of the significant rhb penetration uh, this is also got uh, better connectivity through the bypass road as well uh, although we have uh, uh, also ranked the four projects that he's uh, shortlisted now looking at the two micro markets the inventory overhang in kalwar road is 12 months weighted average price is 3450 rupees a square foot whereas the inventory overhang for sikar road is 22 months weighted average price is 2950 rupees a square foot kalwar road at the moment is growing at about uh, 6.8% per annum and sikar road is growing at just over 7% per annum now out of the four projects the best one we feel is apeksha festival by apeksha housing 
दिस इज लोकेटेड ऑन सिकर रोड प्राइस इज अबाउट फोर एंड हाफ थाउजेंड रुपीज अ स्क्वायर फुट विच इज अ बिट हायर देन दी वेटेड एवरेज प्राइस बट दिस प्रोजेक्ट इज राइट एडजस्टिंग टू द जीवन ज्योति हॉस्पिटल ऑन सिकर रोड इट्स अबाउट सिक्स एंड हाफ किलोमीटर्स फ्रॉम द रेलवे स्टेशन अबाउट सिमिलर डिस्टेंस फ्रॉम द आई एस बी टी एज वेल दीज आर फुल्ली फर्निश्ड अपार्टमेंट्स एंड दैट्स द रीजन फॉर द स्लाइटली हायर प्राइस दीज अपार्टमेंट्स कम फिटेड विद एयर कंडीशनर्स मॉड्यूलर किचन रेफ्रिजरेटर आर ओ चिमनी इट्स कॉल्ड अ डबल बेड फाइव सीटर सोफा इज वेल सेंट्रल टेबल एक्सेट्रा दी सेकेंड प्रोजेक्ट द सेकेंड रैंक Uh, is Viva Heights by us uh, by Guman Group. This is in Culver Road. Price is thirty one hundred rupees a square foot. The construction for this particular project is in advanced stages, and this will be delivered next year. This project is located right off the Culver Road, about two and a half kilometers from the Delhi Ajmer bypass. Uh, the, this project uh, plot has been allotted by JDA under the Kardhani scheme. The third rank is given to. a uh, shivalika by shiv shakti group this is in culver road price is about 3500 rupees a square foot the first floor slab is uh, in progress at the moment this project is to be delivered in about 2 and a half years from now uh, this is located in gokulpura just off the culver road um, and it's got all the basic amenities as well and the last project uh, that we feel out of the four shortlisted projects would be gokul residency by guman group uh located in culver road price is 4000 rupees a square foot the plinth work is uh, going on at the moment this project is to be delivered in 2019 uh the plot for this project was also allotted by gd and other kardhani scheme it's located bang on the culver road about 800 meters from the delhi arbat bypass mr jay prakash i hope all your doubts are cleared now and it is time to take a breather after the break we will find out the impact of new transit oriented policy in gurgaon and will it uh, prove to be a boon or bane for the city we will find out for new home seekers in our project tracker today delhi heights by spp group in gaziabad